So I have a basic uh, Chrome extension up and running. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll have a link in the description below or a card on the top right. I'm not going to fill out the name in the description, all these stuff. We're not really going to need it. It's a short and sweet video. These icons to note, I included the, uh, the jQuery script just so I could show you using two different types of fetch calls. So we're going to be using the Ajax and the jQuery as well as the, the fetch that comes with the normal JavaScript browser action we don't need to talk about permissions so tabs so I can monitor what we're doing with the browser and then the uh, the Google domain homepage so I can inject the the foreground script into the uh, the Google web page anyway so this is the background script here this is where we're injecting the script into the Google homepage and then we have the listener the front end is just going to tell the back end to do an Ajax call as well as a fetch call just two different ways of doing it the foreground script looks like this. So when I click, we're either going to send the background script a, a message to do those calls, or we're going to do the fetch on our, on our end, on the front end, just to show you guys the, uh, the back end and the front end doing the exact same uh, fetch calls. And we don't really need the listener, so it's just blank. Anyway, so let's uh, reload the extension here. Let's go to, this is the, uh, the background JS's console. Let's go to the Google homepage, www.google.com. All right. It's not injected. We have to activate the tab like this. We get the I injected. So we have the background script running. We have the front, front uh, foreground script running. Let's do this. Let's do the background script first. So we're going to uncomment that, and we'll do an Ajax call first. I'm going to uncomment this. Let's see what we get. So let's go to refresh. Let's do Google again. Activate, injected. Click on the page. And of course we get this uh, from origin has been blocked by cores just to show you. And of course there's that message there. There was a problem fetching just to show you it blocks the Ajax, Ajax and it blocks the fetch as well. Let's do this. Here we go. Save. Go back to our extension, refresh. Let's do a google.com. Go here, injected. Let's click. And of course it's blocked as well. And just to show you, just to be uh, concise with this, let's do a foreground. So instead of uh, telling the background to uh, do the fetches, let's fetch from the foreground, see if that works. So save, go back here, refresh, let me close this page, and do a new Google page. Injected, perfect. Let's go to the console of the front end, let's click. And of course, we're blocked by cores. So how do we get past the cores in a Chrome extension? Well, Chrome makes it very easy for us. It's the permissions uh, object uh, property or, or uh, key here. Any uh, site that we want the, the Chrome extension to be able to ping or fetch from, we just add that domain here. So let's do this, HTTP. And of course, we're going through the, uh, right here, yahoo.com. So S colon slash slash yahoo.com you need this final slash here to indicate that there's some I don't know subdomains or URIs here so you need the slash here so we'll save we'll go back actually before we do that let's go in the order we went in so let's first do an Ajax call let's take away the foregrounds call let's tell the foreground to, to uh, call the background to call save save let's go back here refresh the extension Let's go www.google.com. Let's go back. No, not there. Injected, perfect. Let's click, see what happens. And we get no access allowed. We get have cores blocked again. So what happened? We added the domain here, manifest.json, yahoo.com. But what happens because I'm in uh, I'm in Canada, the when I go to yahoo.com, so https colon slash slash www, not there, www.yahoo.com. Yahoo.com redirects me to this site right here. CA, whatever this is. So even though we have the yahoo.com, that yahoo.com is not the same as this guy right here. So let's save, let's go back and try this. So refresh the extension, let's go to google.com. All right, injected, not yet. Activate the tab to get injected. Let's click on the page and see what happens. I injected and we wait and there we go. So we successfully fetched uh, data from a different domain than the uh, the Google Google domain. 
so that's how the permissions work or the cores works in a in a Chrome extension. And of course, to avoid all this, you wouldn't normally do this because you're programming your backend, so you know which which uh, which URLs you're going to be pinging from your fetches. So I would not recommend this right here, but you can always do this: https colon slash slash star slash star, and that will allow you to ping or fetch from any domain. So you don't really need to be specific. So let's try that. Let's go refresh here. Let's go different one. Let's just do just to show you guys this. So we'll Ajax from Yahoo will uh, fetch from, I don't know, let's go bu, 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 xe.com, which is like a currency conversion site. Let's do Yahoo first. Refresh. www.google.com. Activate. I injected perfect. Let's click on the page. See what we get. There we go. And let's just do that xe.com. So uncomment this stuff. And of course this works for the front end as well. I'm not going to show you guys that. Just be wasting your time. So xe.com, close, refresh. Let's open up the Google as well. Activate. I injected. Perfect. Let's click on. And of course we get the response from the, uh, the xe.com. Anyway, so the guy who uh, asked the question about how do Chrome extensions handle cores, how to get past cores, blocked websites, that's how you do it. You just add the domains to the, uh, the permissions tab. And of course, HTTPS is not the same as HTTP colon slash whatever, whatever. Anyways, leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed, and I'll see you guys in the next one.